Hello. How are you? Hope uh, everyone is well. I'm doing fine. Been uh, very, very busy. Wish I had more time to uh, continue to investigate. Uh, I know I'm looking at this uh, carbon dioxide effect and what's the interplay between that and this uh, global warming hypothesis. So uh, that's what I'd like to talk about now, and I'm actually going to have a technical presentation with slides that I'm putting together. But, but I uh, wanted to just go through the, the um, logic, the, the thread of uh, logic behind this, and what's the, what's the story. It's, it's easier said in a few minutes than pouring through a, a bunch of uh, view graphs. Uh, carbon dioxide, as you know, is, is a good uh, greenhouse gas. It can take the infrared radiation coming off the Earth's surface, capture it, and not let it go back out into space. And uh, it results in a higher temperature because it absorbs the infrared radiation and that eventually finds its way in increasing the kinetic energy of the molecules around. And then we also know that carbon dioxide is not the only gas that does that. There's others, methane, water vapor is very good. Any, almost any gas that's got sort of like more than three atoms um, associated with it uh, can, can be like a greenhouse gas. It's got the right places where it can absorb that infrared that's associated with the Earth. Now, the concentration of carbon dioxide in the Earth is about, right now, it's about 370 parts per million. Uh, well, why is that a big deal? You know, it's really maybe not too much, especially compared to another greenhouse gas, which is water. Water, on average, is 1% of the, of, uh, it, it's obviously variable, but it can range from 1 to go up to 4% of, of the atmosphere. I mean, 4 out of every 100 molecules in the atmosphere could be water, versus we're talking about 375 molecules per 1 million gas molecules in the atmosphere. So there's a real discrepancy here. So how does uh, CO2 become a culprit? And it's a very fair question, and people scratch their heads. I've, I've wondered about that, too. And the argument goes something like this. Okay, well, we can't do anything about the water vapor. The water vapor is there. In fact, good thing it's there. The Earth is, is warm enough today. It's just right, so we've got the right balance. And if there wasn't water vapor around, we would the Earth would be cooler. There would be uh, less of a greenhouse effect. And we can't do anything about water, right? We can't go and uh, drain the oceans or uh, freeze them or uh, change them chemically. And that, that's the sort of an absurd notion. Of course, uh, we can control CO2. Now, CO2 has been creeping up. In the last few centuries, it's gone from about 270 parts per million. Now, we're at where I said it's 370 parts per million. And there's no doubt, over the last 100 years, you look at the records, temperatures have increased. And you look at the carbon dioxide trace levels over the last 600,000 years, I'll show that, there's this good data there, appears to be very good data. And you can see we're at a level now that's unprecedented in the last 600,000 years. So, uh, of course, we're putting out a lot more carbon dioxide, so is this associated with human activity? Probably is. So we put all these things together and we say, hmm, we've got a problem. Okay, so here's, here's, the, here's the, the key. Carbon dioxide is there, it's going up, and it'll, it'll, it's an effective absorber, it'll make the Earth a tiny bit hot. It's persistent gas, it'll stay in the atmosphere for a long time, it doesn't just last for one year. A carbon dioxide molecule on average will last maybe about 100 years floating around in the atmosphere. So as you begin to increase that carbon dioxide level, it will have a little bit of effect of warming the Earth, warming the atmosphere. Once you warm the atmosphere, what happens is the atmosphere can hold more water vapor. More water vapor means there's more absorption of the infrared due to water vapor. So more water vapor means high temperature then in the atmosphere. Higher temperature then means what? It means that maybe the oceans are getting warmer and thus more water vapor. So what you have is carbon dioxide is a catalyst, so to speak, which will trigger uh, a runaway greenhouse effect. Greenhouse runaway means that it's sort of a, 
a positive feedback mechanism. The more something happens, the uh, more it drives it to go to an extreme. This is the idea. That's why when you hear the notion of people saying, we only have 50 years left before um, we've lost it all, they're referring to the fact that there will be a runaway effect at that point, that even if you stopped releasing carbon dioxide, there's enough water vapor there, the Earth's getting hotter, and it will have an effect. Now, very complicated stuff. Um, there's all sorts of counteracting forces here. You know, the Earth is a, is a wonderful thing. It tends to balance itself. Uh, and I don't mean that in a holistic way. In a real, it's a real stable system. For example, more water vapor in the atmosphere will lead to more clouds. More clouds will have a very strong effect on the reflectivity of the Earth. Higher reflectivity, because of more clouds, less sunlight reaches the surface. It's well documented the effects. When we have a large volcano, there is a large plume of material pushed into the upper atmosphere. It decreases the amount of um, sunlight hitting the Earth. The Earth gets cooler. It's happened numerous times. 9-11 catastrophe. In the U.S., airplanes weren't flying for a few days. They were not emitting all that water vapor in the atmosphere, which is creating this high level, um, some reflectivity up there with some clouds. You can actually see vapor trails a lot of times. No vapor trails, the temperature on, of the U.S. on average surface temperature went up by a few degrees Fahrenheit. This is pretty solid stuff. So no doubt that strong effect of reflectivity, big, big factor. And we also have a fact that the oceans are a tremendous absorber of CO2. There may be other sinks that we don't quite understand. We also know that biomass is a big absorber of CO2. So we have a system where we have some inputs and outputs of CO2. Uh, the amount of water vapor will uh, maybe correct itself and they're resulting in cooling. You pull all these things together and it's really hard to model it. Okay, I've looked at data and I've yet to see somebody really make a cogent presentation of how this works. And I, 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 I relish one reason I'm putting this up is I would like to get some people to give me some references to some good information on this, some good qualitative information. It's very easy to, you know, go with the buzz and say, yeah, you know, there's no global warming and there's all, or there is global warming and you believe it as a mantra and you don't really think about it. Uh, I'm right there on the edge. I'm sort of on the border. I, I'm sort of a believer. I can see where the logic is there, uh, but there's so many counter counter effects. And yeah, some people say, "Well, look, man, you just you just out of it." There's uh, the the research is well documented. Well, great. Show it to me. Sh show me the show me the documentation. Show me how uh, how good it is. Don't think I'm uh, uh, I'm not a believer. I'm just a skeptic. <laughs> Oh, maybe there's a. I, I, I'm trying to make a slight distinction. You can convince me. I'm, I'm very willing to be convinced of how big this effect is. So with that, uh, uh, you know, basically people are making complex models and trying to project. And you know, in science, whenever you extrapolate, and that's essentially what we're doing. We don't have. We don't really know what the Earth will be like with much higher carbon dioxide levels. We just haven't seen it. We're extrapolating. And extrapolations are always difficult, they're always error prone. I may have a point here in the system and I'm trying to say what it's going to do up here, but I don't have any data points in between. I'm trying to use some kind of model to do that. That's not very good. It's always easy in science to extract if I've got a few data points and I want to understand what's going on in the system between the points where I have some measurements. Much easier to do. So we're extrapolating, a lot of these effects are nonlinear, a lot of these effects are coupled, a lot of these effects tend to be self-correcting. All of that makes this uh, very, very hard problem to solve. Yet, of course, obviously very, very important. If you look at ocean rises a few feet, the effect it's going to have on people's lives is dramatic. So, of course, let's pay very serious attention to this, but let's really make sure the science is right. And it's so the responsibility of all of us as, as humans on this planet to, uh, us who can, really try to understand what's going on. With that, I'll leave you and I'm going to put some more technical material together related to just this very subject. Once again, thank you very much and I look forward to your comments. Bye-bye.